Cars Channel News and Review Car. Two thousand seventeen Toyota CHR Coba Review. If you thought styling wasn't in Toyota's vocabulary, think again. The all new Toyota CHR aims to buck the Toyota design trend with wild angles and zero conservatism. Is it enough to win over the hip youth? Paul Merrick takes a drive to find out. Will be the first to admit that I didn't want to like the 2017 Toyota CHR. It looks like a small spaceship, on paper it has an underwhelming engine and the pricing is ambitious. So, after spending hundreds of kilometers with the car in a variety of driving situations, has it won me over? The Toyota CHR is Toyota's answer to the successful Mazda CX-3 and Honda HR-V, both cars that have really impressed everybody at the car advice office. If standing out in traffic was part of the design brief, the CHR certainly nails it. It turned heads everywhere it went and even had the nod of approval from some of my harder core car friends who won't look twice unless it's propelled by a V8 or some tire frying combination of turbocharged, small capacity engine. In fact, Toyota's design department went as far as offering up to 60 different accessories ranging from aero to protective to allow customers to customize their CHR. It's only second to the Hilux in the Toyota range in terms of personalization options. Traditionally, Toyotas have never quite managed to inspire when it comes to interior design. The CHR also bucks that trend with an interior unbecoming of a Toyota. Straight lines and strange angles are swapped for a wraparound dashboard that aims to inject an air of premiumness to these pricey crossovers. While there's still fake stitching and soft touch fleather, a potentially made-up hybrid of faux and leather, the seats look and feel premium, as does the steering wheel. It's on the safety front that the CHR really impresses. The entire range comes with autonomous emergency braking, AEB, radar cruise control, blind spot monitoring, front and rear parking sensors, a rear view camera and seven airbags. It's one of the few vehicles in this segment which has that caliber of standard equipment. But, the interior is massively let down by an infotainment system that looks like it was sourced from a Corolla in the mid noughties It's missing the type of modern technology a buyer in this segment is after such as Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and even basic things like DAB plus digital radio. It's fiddly to use on the move and the voice recognition system is slow and inaccurate at times. It's a shame because that space atop the dashboard would lend itself perfectly to a full-length infotainment system loaded with the latest technology. Thankfully it does come with a single USB port and Bluetooth audio and telephone streaming. Using the hidden door handle that sits in the top three-quarter section of the second row door, the cramped second row is revealed. With abnormally long legs, anybody sitting behind yours truly will need acrobatic agility to slip in and get comfortable. On top of that, the only storage in the second row is a small cup holder within each door. There's no center armrest and no air vents, both not huge issues in a car this size, but when you're getting close to $40,000 on the road, it'd be nice to have a few luxuries in the second row. On the plus side, there's ample headroom and shoulder room. The seat base is also very comfortable and supportive. So for somebody that has a smaller frame, such as children or younger teenagers, it may not be such a bad space to sit in. Open the tailgate and a fairly cavernous space is revealed. Measuring in at 377 liters, it's over a 100 liters more than Mazda CX-3. The second row folds in a 60 hours 40 minutes split folding configuration with a space saver spare tire residing under the boot floor. On the engine front, the CHR's bark is definitely worse than its spite. The 1.2 liter turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine produces a very modest 85 kilowatts of power and 185 newton meters of torque. That's only ever likely to happen in the soaking wet or on a gravel or grass surface. The rest of the time it's essentially a front-wheel drive affair. 
it's all a great shame because, and this is a big call, the CHR is one of the best riding cars we've ever tested. It rides beautifully over 90% of suburban and city surfaces. It absorbs everything thrown at it and doesn't drive anything like a car that's sporting big 18-inch alloy wheels. The direct steering is also a pleasant surprise given the segment this car plays in. If it had an extra 50 or 100 kilowatts of power, this could be a real hot hatch to drive. If you decide to lob the CHR through some bends, it's not going to set your world on fire. You need to carry a great deal of speed to get any real enjoyment out of a twisty road and while it performs well, it's let down by understeer and a lack of punch out of corners. That's not a huge issue though, considering the demographic and engine under the bonnet. I've got to say, I have come away totally surprised by the CHR. I wasn't expecting to like it anywhere near as much as I have. Sure. The 1.2-liter engine isn't going to set the world on fire and at over $35,000 plus on road costs, you wouldn't go near the top specification Koba model. Instead, we'd suggest having a look at the entry-level CHR front-wheel drive with either the 6-speed manual or CVT. It's well-priced, loaded with features and a really fun car that you can personalize to your heart's content. Click on the gallery tab for more images by Tom Fraser.